Hello, fellow Java developers! Welcome back to our starter course on Apache Camel. In this video, we'll take a look at common practices and features used when working with Camel endpoints. We'll use properties placeholders, dynamic endpoints, references to bins, and finally row values in endpoints URIs. Let's begin! To demonstrate common endpoints features, we'll use a project that we've created in previous video. It is pretty simple Maven project with just two Java classes. Main class that creates and runs camel context and our route class that extends route builder. Camel route itself is not complicated as well. It just reads files from one directory without deleting or affecting them in any way, then logs the contents of the files and writes them to the output directory. Now, imagine we want to externalize some of our endpoints configuration. For example, we want a setting in our properties file that will define value for this knob property, if it's true or false. The property itself, I remind you, tells our consumer endpoint if it needs to remove the input file or to leave it alone. If knob equals true, then the input file is not removed or affected in any way. Let's go to our resources and create properties file my camel dot properties and let's write our option. Let's call it for example my camel property knob and let it be equal to true. Now to make this value show up in our endpoint, we need to do some extra steps. Let's go to our main class and write properties component properties equals camel context get properties component. We need it because in camel properties placeholders in endpoints URIs are handled by this properties component instance. But there is a bit of nuance here. You see, while the class is called properties component, it is not a camel component in a sense that it is not used to communicate by any protocol or produce any endpoints. It is just called properties component for historical reasons. Even if we go to its definition, we will find out that it does not implement the component interface, which is implemented by all actual camel components. So to configure our properties, we need to get the properties component first. As you remember from camel architecture video, all things related to camel live in camel context. So we can get our properties component by calling get properties component method on our context. By the way, if we were to get an actual camel component, we would have used camel context dot get component method. When we got our properties component, all that remains to do is to set our properties file location with set location method that accepts our properties file name. As you can see, here we specified our properties as a class path resource, but there is more ways to do it. For example, we could have used environment variables. You can read all about different ways to specify properties file location here on this documentation page. Link will be down below. Now, when we set up our properties location, we can use this property in our endpoint. This is done by specifying our property in double curly braces like that. Now let's check it and run our route. And it gives us an error. Property with key my camel property knob not found. This usually happens when something goes wrong with our context configuration. So let's check it. Problem with camel context configuration here is that we break camel context lifecycle. You see, first we start the context 
and then we configure our properties component. So let's fix it by starting our camel context after we made our configuration. Here we can see that our route runs normally. It produces the output as specified here in the to endpoint and it does not delete or move the input file. Now let's change the value in this mycamel.properties files to false and run the route again. Now we can see that the input file is deleted because in this case our knob property actually has a value of false. Before we go further, I'd like to say a few words on using properties component with Spring Boot. As we know from previous videos, in Spring application you don't work with camel context directly. So, instead of getting the properties component and setting the properties location, you can just use properties declared in Spring's application.properties file. The properties component will be auto-configured to look up values in application.properties or application.yaml or in any other Spring properties source. So, this is how we can externalize configuration of our endpoints. Now when we have this, let's go further to dynamic endpoints. As you can see, all this time we used static hard-coded directory names. But what if you want to change output directory name based on the input file contents? You see, camel endpoints are evaluated once on a startup and do not change during camel context runtime. These kinds of endpoints are called static endpoints. Now, imagine we want to send the file to the directory with the same name as the file's contents. For example, if file contents are hello world, then the output directory for this file will be src main resources files output hello world. And if the contents of the file are for example by, then the output directory should be src main resources files output by. Yes, this is a strange requirement, but it is needed to demonstrate how to work with dynamic endpoints. It is done with 2D DSL element. So instead of 2, which gives us static endpoint, we are using 2D, which evaluates endpoint URI each time it's about to send a message. To write dynamic part of our endpoint, we are using the same simple language we've used in our log statement to get the contents of a file. Let's run our route again and before we do that, we will set our knob property to true so that our files are not deleted. As we can see, it created both by and hello world folders and moved our files there. So when you don't know your endpoint configuration in advance and want to decide your destination at runtime, 2D is a tool that you should use. Of course, in actual applications, it's rarely seen that a body element is used to form a destination. What usually happens is that people use properties or headers. For example, we can use dot set property DSL element, call it something like destination and assign it any value. For example, we can assign it something that we can get through our method call, but I will assign body. We will look into calling our own Java methods here, but for now, I will just use this set property here in our simple expression with exchange property dot destination. Let's delete our output and run our route again. And as we can see, it created all our folders and moved all our files. So what people usually do in 2D is they specify some property or header and then set this property or header during a route. For now, let's return to our well-known body simple expression and let's go further 
to using bin references in camel endpoints. To understand why we need to use bin references in our endpoints URI, let's look at file endpoint options. Most options have simple types like boolean or string. But what about something like filter option, which has a type of generic file filter? For that, we need to use camel registry, which acts as a storage for such configuration classes. So let's create a filter that only consumes .txt files. For that, let's create our new filter class. Let's do it in a new package called bin and our class will be called something like example file filter. As we remember from documentation, it should implement generic file filter. Which, as you can see, has only one method for us to implement. Here we have our generic file object as an input and we should return true if we want this file to be processed by our route. So as we want only txt files to be processed, let's return file, get name and this txt. Now when we have our file filter ready, let's add it to the registry. As we remember, all camel related entities live in camel context and registry is no exception. We can get it by calling get registry on our camel context and we store our filter by calling bind method which accepts bin name, let's call it my file filter and bin value which in our case will be new example file filter. And that's it, we have our bin in camel registry. All that remains is reference it in our endpoint URI. So let's copy its name and add filter option to our consumer endpoint. By putting this hash sign, we indicate that the value for this filter option should be looked up in the registry by the name which follows the hash sign. And that's it, let's test our filtering configuration. Let's create file named hello.md. We expect it not to be consumed by our route. Let's run it. And indeed, our txt files are copied, but our md file is filtered and not picked up by our route. Before we move on, I would like to tell you about Spring configuration. If you're using Camel with Spring, it does not get its own separate registry. Instead, it uses Spring's application context and looks up bins there. So if we've had a Spring application, we would have just declared our example file filter as a bin instead of adding it manually to the registry like that. And then we would have been able to reference it similarly by specifying spring bin name after the hash sign. The last thing for today is using raw values in endpoints URI. Imagine we want our files to be renamed and the name of the new file should start with ampersand sign, for example ampersand file.txt. Sure, this is strange name for a file, but it is valid. We can create file which name starts with ampersand. To rename our files after they are moved, we use file name endpoint option. But as you can see, if we just put ampersand here, it breaks our URI because any string after ampersand is treated like a separate option. Let's try to run this route. As you can see, it fails because it treats this file txt as a separate endpoint option. So to escape this ampersand symbol, we should use raw construction. Any symbols inside its brackets do not count toward URL validation. 
Let's run our application now. Exactly as expected, our files were renamed to ampersand file.txt. So, to sum things up, today we've learned everything we need to know to work with camel endpoints. We used property placeholder in our component URI by setting up our properties component. Then, with 2D DSL element we created dynamic endpoint, which evaluates destination based on this simple language expression. Then, we binded our bin to camel registry and referenced it in our endpoint URI. And finally, we learned how to escape symbols that might make URI invalid by using row construction. In the next video, we'll start looking into creating integration logic with camel, starting with routing. And with that, here's the end of our lesson on working with camel endpoints. Thanks for joining. Be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that bell icon. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I will answer any of those. See you in the next video. Until then, happy coding!